These data are from HOPG. The survey measurement clearly shows a very strong carbon 1s peak. You can see some form of loss structures here. And these are OJ, again carbon OJ peaks. On the other side we have no additional peaks other than the valence band spectra here and a loss structure here associated with these valence band. But simply observing from the survey spectrum you'd have to believe that the carbon 1s is all signal that derives from a pure form of graphite. Now this is not altogether true because we do have if you look closely at the high resolution oxygen 1s there is a small peak here but other than this the data that we see here looks to be completely dominated by graphitic like structures. The carbon 1s has a, a characteristic shape for graphite and that is we have an asymmetric line shape here apparently and we have these loss structures. So we will require more than one peak to construct this peak model but what we will certainly need is some form of asymmetric line shape. We'll start by putting a background on which is going to be a two gar background and then we'll start to add synthetic components and we're going to use this LF line shape. And the LF line shape has a pair of parameters 1 comma 1 they're both the same and therefore we have a symmetrical line shape here there's no difference from left and right of the position of this peak and that's because these first two parameters define a Lorentzian line shape and the Lorentzian line shape is raised to the left and to the right to a power that is defined by the first and the second parameter in this list so what we'll do to introduce a, an asymmetry is to make the power less than 1. The result of using a power on the left hand side that is less than 1 is that the wing of the, of the Lorentzian line shape is lifted up further away from the peak and therefore we end up with asymmetry here while the normal Lorentzian line shape is on the right hand side. We can even alter the shape of that right hand side if we enter a value greater than 1 that will suppress this wing here. So that too will introduce a form of asymmetry and we end up with a line shape which when I fit to the data will as you can see is suppressed on the one side, extended on the other side. The suppression and the extended wings of these line shapes are also influenced by this parameter here which is a damping factor and the smaller the damping factor that means that the interval over which the asymmetry can extend is reduced and the bigger then the further it is the asymmetry is allowed to extend. So I'm going to change this from 255 to 555 and the act of doing that as you can see has introduced an extended line shape here. So these first three parameters represent adjustments to the to a Lorentzian line shape and a damping factor to limit the extent of this asymmetry. The fourth and fifth parameters in the line shape are related to a, the width and the number of times a Gaussian is convoluted with, this, with the shape that is defined by the first three parameters. So right now we have a width of the Gaussian that is characteristic by this arbitrary value of 360. If I make this 200 and press return you will see that the asymmetry has extended even further and also the damping on this side is less pronounced because of the reduced 
Gaussian convolution width with the Lorentzian, so the Lorentzian is dominating the convolution. And I can again reduce the, the influence of the Gaussian by reducing the number of times the Gaussian is convoluted with the Lorentzian. And so we end up with a line shape here that is fitting the data much better than the symmetrical line shape that we began with. So let's just fit this to the data. And it's actually broader than it ought to be. And one of the reasons for that is that we have structures here that it's trying to fit that it can't possibly fit. So we're going to introduce next some more peaks. So again, we've got a, a symmetrical line shape and the width here and the width limits to the peak are set by this parameter, which I'm going to increase to seven. This allows a broader peak to be defined. So as I adjust these limits that I can allow these peaks to change over a wider region. And what I'm going to do now is copy it and put three peaks in here by taking copies of this peak that I've just set up the limits to. And if I say fit, I end up with a, a peak fit to these data. So while the data appear to be fitting quite nicely, the actual asymmetry that is introduced here is really quite difficult to assess. And you can see that it actually extends a little bit too far out here. So one way of adjusting that is to make this a smaller number, say 450. So you can see that the asymmetry has been damped and hence the, or the residual has moved away from the data itself by virtue of the more damped asymmetry here. And so I need to say fit again. And the extent of the asymmetry will influence the area of these peaks here. So this is all related in terms of how you measure intensity beneath this carbon S. The selection of the asymmetry and the area of these peaks are cl clearly correlated. So this represents one possible solution and not necessarily the right one. So in order to understand a peak model such as this, it's very nice to have a sequence of data such as this one where the initial carbon S envelope changes as a consequence of sputtering the surface with a, an argon ion cluster. The test of the peak model will be measured against whether it can highlight different chemistry within the sample. Now this is the as received form of the HOPG and then the next one is the HOPG after sputtering for six seconds with a argon cluster source. And the question is, is there a difference? And actually you can see that something is happening here. So let's see what the overall appearance is. So a change has occurred, but the question is, is this significant or not? Well, in fact, it's really quite obvious that something significant did happen when you look at the OJ peaks. Something about the, the cluster source has altered the shape of the, these OJ peaks. And that's the type of information that a peak model should be able to highlight.